Well, welcome back to the Bash Juice podcast. Today is an exciting show because we are going to be looking at the brand new lures for 2024. A lot of these baits that have already come out, some that are going to come out in the fall here. Um, and we're actually going to go through the wire to fish list. They have the most comprehensive list of the baits that are kind of new to the market. And we're just going to give our two cents about these baits. Some of them are definitely really good looking and some of them are definitely just busts. Big you, busts. Big busts. And some of them look like baits we've seen before. Yes. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's get into it. First one that I want to talk about is the Berkeley Nessie. Now, this is a soft glide bait. It comes in five inch models all the way up to nine inch models. Um, and CJ, I really wanted to talk to you about this because you kind of have some, uh, I guess you could say, experience with the bait that this one was made after what do you think about yes, it it was definitely modeled modeled after the flag uh, 170 and this is a jdm bait mm -hmm. from japan this is the actual flag 170 uh, when this came out i think a couple of years ago it it, it just took the market by storm no mm -hmm. one's seen anything what is it is it like a fluke it looks like a glide bait honestly I've fished this a lot and mm -hmm. it is not a glide bait. Yeah. This has more, it's got an action closer to like a river to sea S waiver okay. glide bait, but it's more, it's not choppy. Doesn't chop back and forth. This is just more of a slow meandering, um, uh, swimming action. Mm -hmm. Super cool bait looks super sexy. Yeah. But I, I'm anxious to see what Berkeley did because obviously they modeled the Nessie after the flag, but I'm anxious to see what kind of action it has. Yeah. Is it better than the flag? Does it actually glide and have a chopping action? Yeah. So I'm super anxious to get my hands on one because I feel like when, when manufacturers model baits after previous baits it can either go one two ways mm -hmm. it can be an improvement mm -hmm. or it could be a complete bust yeah so let's see let's see what berkeley did with the nessie yep. i think they're scheduled to come out this fall they are um, I know some Berkeley guys like Alex Rudd have their hands on them. Alex has actually put a, a couple of videos out catching them pretty good on the bait. Um, so I am I am very uh, anxious like you to see how it uh, performs. Um, we have seen Berkeley model baits after others, but they always do seem to have some improvements to them. Uh, so we'll just kind of have to see. Little, little things like the Berkeley Chapo. Uh, we talked to Hunter Shryock about that earlier yeah good episode and it was a great episode obviously it was modeled after the plopper with improvements like the tail spins immediately it's got great hooks etc so let's see what berkeley's got not bashing them hopefully it uh it's a player i think something you said today about um the baits like this uh to me just the other day is that you know this bait was pretty hard for you to get a hold of. Oh yeah. And so that's the thing is that if some of these companies overseas that can't get their baits out to the masses, aren't going to do it, uh, which they probably have the ability to, but if they just aren't going to do it, then this is what's going to happen. Bigger companies yeah. are going to come in, they're going to make their models of the baits and that way they can distribute them to the masses i've always said my dad grandpa always said in the business world if you don't take care of your customers someone else will mm, that's good and so if flag can't produce enough of these um, if there's the demand someone else is going to yeah that's and this good. is berkeley that's a little juice nugget right there. Yeah, I love love that thing. <clears throat> so moving on to the next lure. Now, this one is uh, my first look was like, oh, it's another buzz bait. This is a Buckeye Lures G buzz, um, kind of designed by Gerald Swindle. Um, but the thing about this buzz bait is I know that it took over two years to design. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very interesting. Uh, I know that Gerald Swindle, who designed this, spent a lot of time getting this perfect. 
for him. And this is a guy, Gerald Swindle from Alabama. He's an, he's going to be a buzz bait expert. Or actually, he almost won a tournament. I believe it was Neely Henry uh, a couple of years ago with a buzz bait, crushing him. So there's a couple of things that he did with this bait. One is the bend on the uh, the wire itself. Um, you can see it's the, there's a very specific place that he wanted it bent, and that's where this place is bent, or it's bent. I think it's going to allow you to have better hookups uh, with this buzz bait. It looks like it has a solid hook keeper, especially if you're just going to thread a toad on there. So, Yep, I like it. I know he said they spent over the two years – they focused on the wire diameter, mm -hmm. the rivet, how to make that thing squeak straight out of the package. And I do the bend on it, um, I think is key. I, I think that putting that bend, and we, we've seen that bend in several other buzz baits, mm -hmm. I think what it does is it makes it a little more compact, easier to cast. It doesn't catch uh, the air as much. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Gerald's a he's a buzzbait guy. Yeah. If he comes out with a buzzbait, I'm not gonna argue about it. I know this is the buzzbait to have. Yeah. That's what I that's what I like is that it's it's a guy like that behind the bait. Yeah. Um that's the type that's that's the reason why I'll buy a bait. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm like, okay, Gerald Swindle designed this. Yep. He's a buzzbait guy, I'm gonna go catch fish on it. Yep. Same with glide baits, you know. Chris Aldane and the Bass Mafia is out dangerous uh, swim baits, mm -hmm. and I think they're coming out with a glide. Yeah. Um, same thing. He put time and effort. This is his bait. Mm -hmm. He's going to make sure it's perfect. Yep. Same with um, swim bait rod. I know he's coming out with. Um, super interesting. Actually, I don't know if – did you listen to the, to the uh, Bilge podcast? with chris trait and gerald uh-huh i did yeah yeah it was that's good. a great one we'll put the link here are we doing this yet <laughs> we'll put it in the description <laughs> all right description <laughs> yes <laughs> all right so perfect yeah that's a great episode uh love that show they do a really good job high quality next moving on is the culprit shaken nico crawl this is actually a bait a crawl style bait that is designed to be fished on a Nico rig or Neko rig, I guess the proper term for it. I still call it the Nico rig. The Nico rig has been extremely popular, especially over the last five, six, seven years. Um, mostly utilizing a straight tail bait on that rig. Uh, this is more of that crawl style bait. So it's going to be, again, like we talked about, something that's a little bit different. Something that I really like lo uh, the looks of this culprit bait is the little pocket that it actually has for your uh, your O-ring mm -hmm. for the hook to go in. So that is the one thing that has, has happened to me, fishing a straight tail worm. I go to cast that bait out, and because you're using a – typically when you rig up a Nico rig, you have a straight tail worm. And if you put the hook just through the O-ring, the fat end of the worm is on the bottom. Well, when you go to cast that bait, it can help that – because the fat side of the worm is on the bottom, it slides out that way very easily. So this will allow, or this will definitely prevent you from going to just cast that bait and watching your worm fly out, which I have seen. Now, I typically do kind of cut into the plastic, yeah. and that helps with that. But still, they, they've now designed a worm that's specifically, or a, a crawl, that specifically has a little pocket to hold. I do like that. And I think kudos to culprit because... Seeing that pocket that the O-ring, it's the simplest idea Simple. that no one has done. Yep. And it's it's just like, that's cool. I, I want to try that because yep. it looks like a good bait. I know the culprit seven-inch worms are just a standard. Hopefully, they use the same plastic because I like it. Um, soft, but still durable. Yeah. And yeah. 649 for a pack. Not bad. Not bad. This video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app. This is an app that you can download on your phone that helps you define bass on your local bodies of water a lot quicker. Once you download this app, you can actually select the lake that you are fishing, and then you can input data like water temperature, water clarity, whether you are fishing around vegetation, or if you are fishing in a windy or protected area. Once you input all this information, the app will actually spit out lures, 
techniques, and areas that you can go on your local body of water to catch bass. This app is backed by hundreds of different tournament results from across the nation and can be extremely accurate. So if you guys would like to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel and allow me to bring more videos like this to you, hit that link down below and download the Deep Dive app today. All right, so moving on to the next bait, we have another Berkeley bait. This is the Berkeley Dime. Um, so it kind of has a lot of those uh, same um, characteristics as the Fritz side with the disc that's on the bottom mm. of it. Uh, this is also a balsa style bait. It's it's made to, well, it's not a balsa bait. It's made to be just okay. like a balsa bait, um, but it's in that plastic form where it's everyone is very, very consistent. So uh, what are your thoughts about this? It does include the Fusion 19 hooks, which I'm really excited about because uh, Fusion 19s, I kind of fell in love with them a, a number of years ago, and I have put a lot of those those hooks on other baits so when I get baits in that's the first um, hooks that I put on them they're sticky sharp the thing that I like about the fusion 19s is that they are they don't bend I would say that they're a brittle hook though as in I have broke more mm -hmm. of those they don't bend out they don't flex and you don't flex a whole lot of them you tend to break them out when you're trying to get you know the fish unhooked um, but they are they don't flex which is a big thing right in keeping fish pinned. Um, and so we both use those a lot. So I, I just like that the Berkeley baits do come with a Fusion 19. This little bait, um, I think, I don't know that David Fritz had his hand in it, but we've heard that David Fritz is like the guy when it comes to lure design. Um, so this will be a, a, an interesting bait to see how it performs along with the other line of Berkeley crankbaits. I like it. I think uh, an issue with a lot of balsa baits is being able to cast them far. Yeah. Looks like the Berkeley dime has weight transfer system. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's, let's see how it performs. It looks good. Yeah. And I'm sure if it's along the same lines as the Fritz side, the dredgers, any of the Berkeley crankbaits, it's going to be a player. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So moving on now to the Rapala crush city Bonco bronco bug so this is a uh, this is an interesting little lure um kind of one that was actually modeled off of another um lure i believe a little osp beaver yeah, is the, the bait the do live beaver okay yep. so that's the one that it was more or less modeled that's the word we're going to use today modeled after um, this is in part of i believe jacob wheeler kind of had a his hand in this whole crush city line which we're about to kind of go through and talk about um but this is kind of your typical flipping bait it looks a little bit different um it's supposed to have a bronco buck to it a little kick yep. to it um and kind of be more of that gliding style bait um kind of like a beaver i know the so the osp do live uh beaver is specific it was specifically made for the free rig Mm. To where the weight drops first, and then it's got that gliding, almost dolphin like swimming action. I mean, let's see. I, I'm interested uh, for the whole Crush City line of baits mm -hmm. to see what the plastic material feels like. Mm -hmm. Look at the durability of it. Mm -hmm. um, colorways, or I mean, soft plastics, green pumpkins, <laughs> four different color flakes all of that so i i'm anxious to see the the whole crush city line yeah that is kind of interesting like no matter no matter what new plastic comes to the market it's the same four colors that always catch fish yeah. pretty much yep so all right moving on to the another rapala crush city bait this is a freeloader and this is the bait that jacob wheeler just won a tournament on lake gunnersville with kind of using that technique that we talked about with joey nania that ned Niki, that moping that kind of that casting a damiki rig uh bait um so he actually has already used this bait he's already won tournaments with this bait um this one here again was kind of modeled after another bait. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Do you? It, um, it would be between the Jackal Eyeshad Hog Farmer Spunk Shad, which is now licensed through Missile Baits. That's correct. Um, it, it looks like a super versatile bait. I know they've talked about using it on vibrating jigs, mm -hmm. and now jig head minnows. Mm hmm. Um, and I know in my experience with the eye shad, the spunk shad, 
it, it is super versatile. Yeah. So again, it, but when you come out with a new line of soft plastics, you kind of get your whole core baits in there. Just like mm -hmm. next one up, the Ned BLT, it's a Ned bait. Ned bait. Yep. Three inch. But you know, you've, it's one of those things you have to have because if you don't take care of your customers, they're going to go shop somewhere else. They're going to get the TRDs or the thousands of other Ned baits. They're all out there. So that's where I think when you drop a new line of soft plastics, keep your plastic consistent, mm -hmm. good material, mm -hmm. keep it durable, salted, unsalted. Um, it, and that's where you have to separate yourself from the competition. Yeah. I think that uh, something that was really interesting that I heard about Ned Rigs in general, and this was, I believe, from Seth Fighter, is that he said that when he takes a TRD out of the package, that he'll actually throw it in the water for a minute and that Every now and then he'll get ones that actually sink, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting because it being the whole elastic. But he said that if you don't want those, those are the ones that tend to, you know, if they don't, if they don't have high floating, if they're not very buoyant, um, it doesn't have quite the action that you really want in a Ned rig. Now, sometimes it just doesn't matter. Like people all the time cut a Cinco in half to put on a Ned rig and it's going to catch fish, right? Sometimes fish are just dumb most of the time actually, but there are times, especially in highly pressured situations, yep. where having that floating action, which really just makes that bait come naturally across the water, it makes it stand up down there, makes a big difference. And I know that with these baits, the um, the ones that we were just talking about, the, the Crush City baits, this is supposed to be a high floating, um, very durable plastic. So that might be something that you do wanna do if you pick up some of these baits. Throw them in the water, yeah. make sure they're float, make sure that they're kind of doing what they're supposed to. That's true. And with, I think one of the most genius marketing campaigns that I've seen in a while was the Z man where they took all the competitor Neds and their TRD with elastic material dropped them in a fish tank. And the Z man was the only one that was left standing up. Yeah. I thought, I mean, that's genius. Yep. <clears throat> Yep. No, that is, we, we like, we like good marketing around yeah. here. So especially when it comes to lures, because <laughs> there's not a whole lot of innovations. We will actually get to some here in a minute, especially with some of these Japanese companies. Um, but anyways, moving on to the very next lure, we have the Rapala Crush City Cleanup Crawl. Um, so to me, this is kind of a standard crawl. I don't, I don't know that there's a lot different in it. Um, I'm sure it will work the the very same as other crawls out there on the market. Um, to me, though, I, I'm trying to think back in the memory banks. I think the only time that I use a, a crawl like this, for the most part, is on the back of a jig these days. Mm -hmm. The only other time that I may use it, and I may use this one, is for a Carolina rig, kind of in replace of like a Zoom speed crawl. Um, I don't really flip and pitch just a straight crawl much anymore. Um, I, I did, I used to, um, but I do, I do wonder, um, kind of about that with crawls in general. Like I would love to see just the, I wish we could see like some sort of trend when it comes to just the standard crawl bait, like the, the trigger crawl, the Berkeley trigger crawl. I feel like that was one that has always been around and is a great little bait, but I just, I only use it really on the back of a jig anymore. Yeah. Hmm. I'm um, also one thing I noticed looking at the Crush City line of baits is it seems like a dollar a bait is the new standard. Ooh. These are all six pack, seven crawls for six ninety nine. Good six pack for six forty nine. Yeah, on the swim bait, and I I, I don't know. It, is that the new standard? It must. be. It must be. I know some of the JDM baits get up to like $2 a bait. Yeah. But you think for years, like I've always hated buying Cinco's oh. because it's eight ninety nine for a, a 10 pack. So you're talking 90 cents a bait, basically a yeah. dollar. And I've always hated that because what happens, you, you catch two fish, you cast one off and there it goes. But guess what? 
You still buy them. You still buy them. <laughs> still buy them. <laughs> you still buy them. That's right. We we will spend a lot of money. So moving on, another Rapala uh, lure. Rapala came out with quite a few baits. Um, I mean, a lot of them are part of this Crush City line, but we might as well get through it. And this next one is a, a, a swim bait, um, and it is the Rapala Crush City. They call it the Mayor. What do you think about that bait? The mayor. Mayor of the lake. Mayor of the lake. It comes in a three inch, a a four inch. Um, There's eight in a pack for uh, 649. That's what they're saying. I mean, is it just another swim bait? Is it just another swim bait? That's a good question. It it does have that little uh, tickler on the the tail. The top. Yeah. Which um, there's another lure that maybe we won't discuss that you have grown quite fond of over the last year that has that little tickler on the top like that, and it's a fish catcher. Oh, it tickles them. The thing about that bait that we're talking about, which we could go ahead and mention it if you wanted to. I, I don't know. You don't? You don't? I don't it's, know what bait it is. Your swim bait. Your swim bait like the mag draft, but not the mag draft. Oh, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> well, I will at least say that that bait, um, it kicks at a much slower yes. rate than for instance the mag draft we yes. love a mag draft but if you creep a mag draft that tail will not kick nope. back and forth it just rolls this one it doesn't matter how slow you make it go it still kicks and if you're using uh the mayor style bait and i'm not saying that that little tickler does that um uh or that the mayor does that but if it does in a three or four inch size this will be a phenomenal mm-hmm. cold water bait because cold water jig heads, three inch swim baits are a deal. And if it can kick slightly at that um, really low speeds, could be a really good bait. I think it, it, it might just add just a little touch of stability. Stability. To keep that tail, keep the bait from just blowing out and just rolling. Yeah. Yep. So, Rapala OG Deep Tiny 7. This actually is a bait that I am excited about um, because you and I have both kind of grew up throwing really tiny crankbaits, really small two-inch crankbaits. This one comes in at two and a quarter. It's five sixteenths of an ounce, so it's very light. Um, you will probably want to cast it a lot with a spinning rod. I got to imagine you still be able to whip it with a bait caster like we've done in the past, um, but I do like... Um, this bait, I think this is a good, highly pressured body of water bait. We already know that the OG, uh, the Rapala OGs, uh, that are kind of designed in part with Ot Defoe have been extremely popular and work extremely well. So this one that the fact that it's a deeper diving, it's a small bait. I really, I'm actually really, uh, I, I can't wait to get my hands on one. Let's do it. Let's I, do. I like it. I, I think you, you take a successful, bait like the original og let's modify it it's got a yeah deeper so circuit board bill it almost looks like it's got a little weight on the nose yeah but i i like it it's a successful line of baits modify it add more skews make money make money let's go that's what they do all right, moving on from Rapala, a lot of Rapala baits there are the Strike King baits. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've always been a big fan of Strike King. Probably KVD instilled that in me with just winning everything on Strike King baits. But uh, the next one we got is the Strike King Gravel Dog. So this is uh, deliver, it delivers a wide wobble action. Uh, that is bite size. It's a 1.5 profile. If you know the Strike King baits, there's a lot of 1.5 profiles. Um, so it looks like they're going to have a couple of different models of this bait. Uh, a, a, a Gravel Dog 8, a Gravel Dog 10, um, diving anywhere from 5 to 10 feet of water. So this is a bait, again, that is modeled mm-hmm. after a very another popular bait. Um, actually a couple of popular baits. I think it all probably started with the wiggle war. Yep. Absolutely. And then there was the rock crawler, rock crawler, rock crawler. Yep. Super successful bait. Mm -hmm. And now strike Kings getting in the game with that wide wobble, um, action, Mm -hmm. smaller profile, probably a killer in cold water. Uh, just pulling it through rock and wood. Yep. I like it. I like it too. The interest. 
Strike King has great colors. They do have great colors. That one that they that's in this picture, which will be on the screen right now, that kind of ghost green color, we're both really yes. fond of that one. Oh yes. Um, so that's a that's an interesting little bait to me. That the thing that's interesting to me is that they called it the gravel dog. Um, that's also a name that's just like the, you have the rock crawler, the gravel dog. Like it's just all this. Why, why not just have a more unique name? That's what I'm trying to say. Anyways. Imitation is the most sincerest form of flattery. There we go. You're, you're coming with the business juice today. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> All but right. Not imitating is a Strike King KVD J300 deep sinking jerkbait. S- sinking? Sinking. I don't think I've ever seen a jerkbait that was specifically built to sink. I was about to say, I have a couple that sink, but it's not specifically no, not built. Not supposed to sink. <laughs> not supposed to. Yeah, this this I believe where did it say the rate was? Um point half, five yeah, half, half a foot. foot per per second. Or per yeah, per second. That's actually fairly fast sink. So this is a, I, I believe that this is going to be a bait that I mean, obviously you can work it as deep as you want. Um the thing about a jerk bait is you don't have many of them that are gonna go below about twelve feet like in general. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this is a bait that, you know, if you have a brush pile, uh, if you have a a load of spotted bass in a brush pile in 25, 30 foot, you're going to be able to cast this out with the use of a forward facing sonar, watch that bait sink down, jerk it right over top of them. And you're going to be presenting a bait over those fish that don't normally see that style of bait. And that's something that we've talked about. We I talk about all the time on the channel is doing something that's different mm-hmm. can really, really help you. So this is a bait that I think is really interesting because it's sinking, it's just different. The thing about this bait is I think you're gonna lose them. I think you're gonna lose a lot oh, of them. Oh yeah. Cause it's, uh, it's you're, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be letting that bait sink and it's gonna get down there and it's going to get hung from yep. time to time. And the thing is, is when it does get hung, it's not like a floating bait that, you know, you can just keep popping it out of the brush and hopefully it floats up. Yeah. No, this one's going yeah. to the bottom. The nice thing, though, is that it appears to have a um, a longer bill on it. Mm-hmm. And this is something that, I, again, another Seth Fighter thing that I kind of learned from him through, I don't know, it was a video that he put out. But... He said that, or maybe it was... Uh, no, it was Seth on, uh, I think it was Bass U. It was Bass U. Yeah. Um, but basically said that those those baits will come through wood a lot better. Jerk baits that have a longer bill really help kick that bait up. So if it hits a piece of wood, it kicks that bait up, lets it crawl over mm-hmm. those branches a lot better. So that's that's that'll be good. Yeah. That'll help it to not get hung as much, but the fact that it's sinking, it's just going to happen. If you have forward facing sonar though, you have no excuses cuz you should be able to see that bait. That's right. Three trebles, triple grips. I like it. Yep. Well, moving on, this is a this is one of the more, I guess you could say unique baits um of the lineup. It's one that's definitely different and not I I'm sure it probably is modeled after something modeled. Uh this is the Strike King Rage Hawk. This is a 3.25 inch bait, um, so it's it's small, but it's actually kind of a, a bigger piece of plastic than maybe it looks in the picture. Um, so it's it's very interesting. It'll 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 fit up to a five aught um, sized hook, like that's an a, EWG. Yeah, that's a big hook. That's a big hook. The interesting thing to me about this bait, I'm trying to think of the bait. If we had Mikey Balls on here, he'd probably know. But I think that Gambler made a a newt or something like that. It was a bait that, to me, looks similar to this. He, Mikey, used to fish it as a topwater. He would cast it out, mm-hmm. rip that thing across the top, and it's like a big, bigger profile plastic that just blah, 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 blah. It's almost like a plopper-sounding bait, okay. but it's in a soft plastic. Yeah. So I think there's going to be a number of ways you can fish this bait. You can obviously flip it. You could throw it on a Carolina rig, but doing it as a topwater is something that um, I think could be interesting and it's got the rage appendages yep so on the surface of the water it's just gonna it's gonna be flapping interesting yeah Very that's that's what that's what is great about fishing is there's no rights or wrongs yeah here you've got a bait that i'm sure they designed for punching flipping and hey i'm gonna fish it weightless on top yep and it catches fish yep so be creative 
uh, have an open mind yeah. on baits you can use in different techniques. I also think that the weightless plastic is something that <laughs> it's always been around with the Cinco, right? That's the thing yeah. that people have, and think of how many fish a wacky rig or a Texas rig Cinco weightless has caught. I mean, billions probably at this point, maybe not, I don't know. But anyways, weightless plastics, like we talked to with Kinta Kimura are just a big thing. You know, like mm -hmm. he's casting out a bait, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, kind of that turd style bait, um, or basically a soft plastic by itself. It's a very natural action. This is the reason why a Carolina rig is so effective is because that bait down there looks so much more natural in comparison to where you simply peg a weight against its nose, like a Texas rig. So like you're saying, there's no rules in fishing. You can do this how you want, but that weightless soft plastic, I think that's something we're going to see a trend of a lot more in the future. We're already kind of seeing it with all these different different uh poop style baits that are coming out um, but anyways we'll go ahead and move on to the next bait another strike king bait and this is the strike king bitsy splash small popper small popper i uh, i know that for me i've always been a fan a fan of the the regular splash and the splash junior both you and yes. I have used the Splash yep. Junior a ton. And the reason when we use this bait is when those bass are eating really, really small bait mm -hmm. fish. So the fact that they have made a smaller one, which you're going to ha probably have to cast this on a spinning rod. I don't think you can do it. 16th ounce, 8th yeah. ounce. Quarter ounce, quarter maybe. Ounce. But that, I think, will be super effective for when the like every time you every time in so many lakes across the nation when you hit august september the young of the year shad bluegill they're all tiny we're even watching it right now on champlain mm -hmm. they're saying that the bass are feeding on one and a half inch bait and we have seen that if you use a bait that's bigger than that you will not get bit right like you have to match the hatch yep. in that situation so this will be a little bait that will do that and Strike King, the good thing about Strike King is that they're fairly high quality, although I always change out my hooks, fairly high quality, and it's only $5.99. That's yeah. not bad. I think this is going to be the start of a line of baits for Strike King. And this is purely speculative. Speculative. Uh, in the BFS world. Okay. Bait finesse system mm -hmm. or something like that. Something that you can cast with a, a bait cast rod. Um, I have zero experience with BFS reels, rods, because I prefer to use spinning rods. <laughs> I, I just do. Yes. I can't backlash a spinning rod. Yes, but you can but get the, a lot of wind knots. Yeah, a lot of wind knots. Still, still working on the right braid. Yeah. Uh, but I, and I think a mega bass just released a whole series of BFS baits. Basically, their same line of jerk baits, poppers, walkers, in a super scaled down version. So it'll be interesting to see if the industry um, moves towards these tiny baits. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about with Kenta, when the fish are extremely pressured, you either go to tiny baits or big baits. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of big baits already out there. Let's see what these tiny baits can do. Yep. So the next uh, the next couple of baits that are actually on this list are crappie baits. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on them. Um, but I am going to go down to the Bill Lewis Hammer Trap, which is uh, basically next. I mean, it's a it's a Bill Lewis trap. I mean, we have the rattle trap probably one of the most infamous i mean also underrated underrated leaders. rattle trap does not look sexy no but it catches fish it catches fish i mean it's like the original i mean when i pick up a lipless crankbait to this day i still call it a rattle trap no matter what oh, brand yeah. it is i'm like oh what rattle trap you throw on? you know like that it's tissue and kleenex like so now that bill loose has come out with this bait the hammer trap it's basically the reason they call it the hammer trap is because of its noise hammering and it's an incredible hammering action so i'm assuming that it just has um some sort of distinct sound to it um this is something that to me will make a big difference uh i've, I've always been big on sound uh and vibration 
over color. I think a lot of times we get distracted by colors, but there's going to be situations, especially if you fish uh, in the south or you fish grass fisheries where you might fish a, a trap style bait a lot. There are going to be days where that uh, a bait that has a lot of action is going to or a lot of vibration is going to outproduce all other baits that's why like when the one knocker kind of came out it was so everyone wanted a one knocker i felt like because it just had a distinct sound it had a distinct knock the only thing about these baits is that you have to watch out is that the fish get used to them real quick yes and yep. that was part of the study with uh when we talked to zach slagle yeah bring it all full circle the rattle trap it's a good uh, tool to keep in your tackle box. If you're fishing a school of fish and they stop biting the OG rattle trap, pick this one up. It's a different sound, different vibration. See if the fish will react to that. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going down to the Buckeye Lures Brush Panda Heavy Jig. This was designed by Jacob Peroznik, um, and this is kind of – uh, it's a little bit more of a unique looking jig, but at the end of the day, to me, it's a jig. What's your thoughts? Jig's a jig. Um, I, I don't know that there's much innovation in the world of jigs. I think probably the most critical part of the jig is the hook. Yep. The line tie angle. Yep. And the brush guard. Okay. This looks, I mean, it looks like a jig. I like kind of that 30 degree line tie i feel like you get a better hookup but it's not as good in wood yeah so this looks like more of a grass jig maybe a swim jig yeah that's what that's what it looks like and it does have a weird i shouldn't say weird but it just has a unique head to it i don't know i think the biggest thing for me with jigs is that hook gap the gap between mm. the the hook the the eye and the the um the point of the hook like this one looks fine to me some jigs on the market you'll have the point of uh the eye is almost parallel with the hook and it's like to me it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense it's like you're you're probably going to miss some fish it's kind of like an ewg hook to me i know that people love ewg hooks i used to fish them a lot but i don't anymore because i've actually had a lot of bad success with missing fish with an ewg so Next up is right. the Buckeye Lures, the Shocker swim bait head. To me, again, the swim bait head. Swim bait head. But let's see. We talked with Joey Nania about the Z-Man finesse eyes jig head mm -hmm. and the um, development and the curvature, the the curved bottom of it, the flat sides. So those are. I mean, it looks like it's just a swim bait jig head. I'm sure there's some innovation in that. Maybe the keeper, the keeper. Uh, system is really, really good. Uh, I think time will tell. Yeah. I think this is just Buckeye Lures filling a gap in their product selection of, hey, we need a swim bait jig head. Yeah. Here it is. To me, this one now, it does come in an eighth ounce size to one ounce, so it'll be good for pretty much any type of fishing that you do. I do like the keeper. It's kind of double pronged to help keep that plastic up there, especially if you don't want to use glue. Um, I don't mind using glue, but I do hate that it just kind of... It clogs it up. Clogs it up yeah. over time. So next up is, the again, another Buckeye Lures buzz bait. This is called the Chop Top. Uh, so this is a little bit more of your knocking style buzz bait. Uh, a lot of times this means that the blade of the buzz bait hits on the head, which really creates that knocking sound. So it's going to have a kind of a unique sound to it. I think that's going to be the biggest differentiator with this bait. This one looks like it comes with a skirt on, um, which most of the time I end up pulling that thing off anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, it does have kind of that flat head design, which kind of help pop that bait up there on the surface. If you don't want to put a plastic on it, a lot of times with that plastic, it kind of keeps that bait on the surface longer, keeps it, helps it to pop up. And that flat head helps with skipping it too. Oh, yes. No buzz baits are extremely hard to skip. Adding the plastic toad helps to skip, but also having that flat head. Uh, gives it that surface almost like skipping a stone yeah. across the water. Yeah. 
So moving on, another Buckeye Lures uh, bait. Now we ha- are getting into another jig head. Uh, this one kind of, this one was designed by Mark Daniels Jr. Uh, it says that he's known to be a Ned fishing expert. We did see him win, I remember an Elite Series tournament on Oahe with mm-hmm. the Ned bait. Um, mostly because of that. So this bait to me, I I laughed at it at first because it looks like they took uh, the typical Ned head and just turn it around and Mm -hmm. stuck the hook in the other side. That's what it looks like. I, I can't argue with that. Looks the thing for me with Ned heads and we pour our own is the most critical part of it is the hook. Yeah. I like this hook. It looks good. It's got almost that like O'Shaughnessy bend to it. Yep. And I also like how the hook eye is almost embedded mm-hmm. in that light. I think it will help protect the knot a little more when you're using light line mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of the day, it's a net head. Net head. Yeah. I mean, people are going to argue with us about that, but to me it's, I, I just don't know that it's always going to help you to catch more fish. A lure should be designed to help you catch more fish. There's things that we've talked about with Gerald's buzz bait, smaller profile, mm-hmm. putting that bait down a little bit further. That's going to help you catch more fish. Is this going to help you catch more fish? I don't know. Probably. Time will tell. Time will tell. But again, Buckeye Lures utilizing their pro staff to design. We like that. Um, design a, a jig head that is, I mean, it is different it's definitely different i like it yeah <laughs> okay keep going i like a lot of this stuff i like lures and you like lures you do i'd like them too all right moving on to the next uh set of lures i'm actually pretty excited about some of these because we're getting into some of the japanese uh companies here um I said this off camera and i probably shouldn't say it but i feel like some of the japanese companies are the only ones that are truly innovating i mean what we just talked about with uh culprit that's innovation um but it seems like the japanese lures are the ones that they actually come out with new lures something Mm -hmm. that's new to the market you know with that being said uh moving on to the duo realis br fish this is actually a jig um well actually we'll kind of talk about the next two together because there's a br fish which is the plastic and then there's the br head which is the jig head so this is going to be um kind of a very uh it's a jig head that's really kind of has a darting action to it um so uh, it's hard for me to tell exactly what that's going to look like but the fact that they have designed a jig head to have a certain action speaks for itself i think that this could be something that could be utilized with the whole ned meeky type thing where you're casting a jig head looking at it having a certain action and catching fish now this is i i believe this is a glorified darter head okay and darter heads are kind of dead right now okay i think you're right that use this for the ned meeky forward facing but also if this bait does what i think it will you can pop it off the bottom Mm. and it will dart to the left pop it back to the right almost like not like a spook but maybe like a tube it has super erratic action i forgot about darter heads yeah and the fins on the side of this head remind me a lot of the depths sakamata shad Mm. to where it actually adds a stabilizing diving motion. Mm -hmm. Those fins catch the water and it makes it dive. Yeah. So this is really interesting. I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Um, And I think doing the forward facing thing, if you're casting at a fish, this jig head is not coming straight back to the boat. Mm -hmm. It's going to go off to the side, Mm -hmm. rock and roll, uh, which I think could be critical too. Yeah. I like it. And I like uh, three grams, five grams. I still got to get used to grams figuring out (laughs) what that means. But they've got smaller hooks, one aughts, two aughts. Yeah. I like it. I like it. All right. Duo Realis 
Uh, Crank 48MR is next up on the list. This is uh, a bait that's designed to kind of fish in that six and a half to eight foot zone. Uh, 48 millimeters, which is equivalent to about two inches. Yes. And um, so it's a compact crank uh, meant for fishing in shallow, hard bottoms. Uh, I noticed right off the bat with this bait, it almost looks like it has a thicker bill on it than usual, which if it's designed to fish on shallow, hard bottoms, that's going to be nice because we have both seen how you can, if you, if you get, if you fall in love with one crankbait and you fish that sucker a lot, you will grind down that bill so much over time that you don't even know it until you take a new one out of the package. And you're like, my word, no, no wonder I could only get mm -hmm. four foot deep on a six to eight foot diver. So the fact that this one's a little bit thicker, at least it looks like that to me, maybe that'll be a longer lasting crank. I think it, I wonder if this is along the lines of a wiggle wart. Hmm fishing uh, hard rocky bottoms yeah six and a half to eight foot yeah two inch smaller profile yeah i like that color too because <laughs> it's pinkish yes okay duo realis finder shad uh this is along the line of like an eye motion bait hardly any action to it i actually have some of these baits i was about to say these have been out for a little while they've been out for a while i don't know if duo just revamped it or maybe <clears throat> I they're think, distributing it in the u.s now i think they re i think they re what's the word i'm looking for design i don't even know that they redesigned it i think that they just re-put it out on the market oh relaunch relaunch yep. because they're they're now this was originally a drop shot bait Mm. So if you look at some of like two years ago, I think is when it came out, it, it, that a lot of people were talking about it being just a small drop shot bait. Well, now with forward facing sonar, with these jig head minnows, Ned Meeky moping techniques, this is one of those baits that's going to have that good action. If you're just sitting down there, yeah. barely twitching it on a jig head. So it's almost like they just relaunched it to say, Hey, we still have this bait that works really well. And it's smart, smart, remarket it. Make some sales. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Duo Realis Spinbait 80, but a shallow version. We are both uh, fond of the Spinbait 80, have caught us a lot of fish over the years. Um, they've always had the regular Spinbait, and then they've had a G-Fix, which was actually a heavier version. I always liked the G-Fix just because I could get it down a little bit. I could cast it further. Now, this is the shallow version. So, obviously, it's going to run a little bit shallower. Um, I think that this is important when you are trying to catch schoolers on this bait. Yes. Yeah. So that's that to me is going to be the main benefit of having a shallow uh, spy bait, spin bait type bait is if you make a long bomb cast with your traditional 80 or 80 G fix, it probably gets down about four to six foot in the water column if you're just kind of medium retrieving it back. So if this one stays up in two foot, three foot zone, that actually could make a big difference if you're fishing for fish that are schooling and, and coming up to the surface and blowing up because you yeah. don't want to fish below them. If this bait stays above them, it'll make a big yeah, difference. Keep it in the strike zone. It doesn't say how heavy it is. I know. I think the G-Fix is three-eighths of an ounce. I think the original 80 is like a quarter. So I'm guessing this one's got to be lighter. Hmm. But maybe it's just designed. It's got more of an air pocket in it or something. 50 centimeters below surface. Dang, I wish... That's, I don't, what's a centimeter? Millimeters, that would be like. Isn't two one centimeter, isn't two and a half centimeters is one inch. So that's 20 inches below surface. Two foot. Two foot. But it's not like it's like, I'm sure it'll sink. But maybe it just doesn't but maybe sink quite just, as fast. Just a, that medium retrieve, it's just going to yeah. stay there. Hmm. Dude, we got to get our uh, mathematics. 
figured out. You know we what? We need a conversion chart right here on the desk yeah. so we don't sound like there's, complete dummies. Yeah, well, there's some people that probably know it right off the bat, but I guarantee the majority that are listening to this are sitting there doing the same thing. Or they're pulling up the Google thing, which I always do, centimeter to inch version, but I'm pretty sure it's 2.54 centimeters equals one inch or something like that. Anyways, moving on, Duo Realis T Hog. Um, this is, um, I'm not even sure if this is a flipping style bait. I do know that it was designed by uh, Mr. Nishimjima, who is a bass fishing guide at Lake Biwa. I know I butchered that. Um, but anyways, this might be another one of those baits um, that you can kind of free f- do the free rig with uh or, or weightless um there's a there's a number of ways you could obviously use it with a texas rig a carolina rig um but it's three and a half inch it's pretty flat it's definitely flatter than most baits you see on the market yeah it says so it's a high density material makes me think that it's kind of a, a weightless bait but it says that it only weighs three eighths of an ounce which I guess is heavy for a yeah. weightless bait, but like this one weighs three quarters of an ounce. Was it really? Yeah. Gemini. It's a missile. But I think, yeah, I think it's just a versatile bait. You can do the weightless free rig. Yeah. All that. It, Duo has a really cool feeling plastic formula, super natural looking. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this one looks like it, it kind of looks like a crab. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely different looking. Probably could have a, could probably imitate a bluegill fairly well too with how flat. Oh, I bet if you rig the eye of the hook closest to the pinchers, it slides back. Look how pointed the back is. Oh, so, so I bet it backwards? It, I bet you rig it backwards. Mm. It kind of does that backslide okay. thing. Okay. Backslide right under a dock to a five-pound yeah. largemouth. I like it. All right, moving on again. Duo Realis Versa Pintail. Uh, to me, this is another one of those uh, baits that's just kind of designed for uh, kind of that Ned Meeky, that moping, that that Demeeky rig style bait. It's a three-inch little bait. Um, these are baits that you really just kind of have to put on to see – what the action is, if it's actually different than kind of the other baits that we discuss, like your uh, Z-Man yeah. baits. So, I don't know. Nothing. Just keep moving. It's just a little <laughs> three-inch minner. All right. So, we have the, again, another duo bait. It's This is the Versa Shad. I feel like that one's been out for a little while, though, maybe. Maybe it comes in a smaller size now or something. I don't know. It do- It looks super familiar. I can tell you the tail is unique. Mm. The tail has, so it's a boot style tail. Okay. But it doesn't, it, if you look at, compare this to a Kitek, the Kitek tail is super duper flimsy. Mm. Like you can see through it. Yeah. This has like that thicker boot tail, which I like because I feel like it, compared to a Kitek, the tail is rapid. Just. Mm. I think these thicker boot tails have a slower, just bulbous, just bloop, 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 bloop. Kind of like the, uh, what's the really big swim baits that have those those boot style tails? Uh, the Huddlestons. Huddlestons. Yeah. And the Huddlestons are known for cold water, slow fishing, which yep. this one also says that it's designed for very slow, what does it say? Dead slow retrieves. Yeah. So that tail's just going to keep... Keep going. Keep going, even if you're barely moving the bait forward. That's a that's a big deal. That's a big deal. All right, Duo Realis Wriggle Indie Slim. Uh, this looks like a Ned <laughs> a Ned bait. It's a Ned bait. They put a little you know like bulbs on it, and yeah. I like that color though. Yeah, that I really color. like the. I I feel like in pressured situations, kind of the two tone color. That's not a laminate, but. Kind of those two-tone colors make a huge difference. Yeah. Give the fish a different look. Sometimes it's like they like one side of the bait. They don't like the other side. So we got another bait, another duo bait. This is the Wriggle Stick. Uh, This is said to be the new standard of straight tail worms. 
Uh, it comes in a three and four inch model. Um, so this is uh, kind of another one of those one of those small Cinco, um, bigger. I think it almost is like a bigger poop bait. Yes. Well, not a bigger one, but like a slenderer one. I think this is a relaunch too. Really? And I know I've seen this in the water, and yeah. it does look totally different than a Senko. Yeah. Hmm. So we'll say that. I think it wiggles more. It's got more of that. Um, it's got a high salt content to it. High salt. Yes. Well, stepping away from Duo, we're going to move on to the Lunker Hunt Hive Wacky Stick. So this was meticulously designed. Uh, I thought maybe it would be um, a Matt Airy bait because I think he's with Lunker Hunt, but uh, I don't see his name on here. Again, to me, that does make a difference when I do see a, a pro's name that I, not that I respect, but that I have a lot of confidence in, I guess, the signing baits. But anyways, this kind of like the um, culprit has a little slot for your O-ring when it comes mm-hmm. to fishing it wacky style. Uh, so this is, again, this it's a, such a small design, but it makes a big difference. So the, the difference here to me um, between this and like the culprit one is that the culprit was designed for that Nico. I don't think you have too much of a problem keeping the wacky rig with the O-ring because it's weightless not having a small weight, but um, it is still something that's going to help. Yeah, and, and looking at, so this is the Lunker Hunt Hive, and it looks like they've got a whole series of soft plastics called the Hive. Mm-hmm. And what's cool, oh yeah, what's cool is everything is modeled after a beehive. Now stay with me here. Or the honeycomb stay. of a of a beehive, okay. which is, I mean, it's, it's cool. I don't know that that design adds anything in the water. I thought you're, you were a bee guy. I thought you were about to tell me something super cool. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And another hive bait is the seeker swim bait. This looks like a long skinny Kitek style bait. As a matter of fact, this one is five and a half inches long. So definitely, oh no, it comes in other sizes, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half. So I feel like this is the standard of finesse swim baits these days are these ribbed or hive baits. Just what everyone has. Yep. All right. Gotta have it. Gotta happen. Lunker Hunt Hive Hellgramet. Aren't they called a Helmogranite? Helmogranite? Maybe. Yeah, it is a Helmogranite. But this one's called the Hellgramet. Put it on a Ned head. Put it on a Ned head. Um, Great creek fishing baits. Yes creepy have you ever seen a helmet granite in I didn't, person not in person I, I wouldn't go near it yeah not a fan look like an alien if those yeah. things were like two foot long i'd be no way wow they got those claws i'd never <laughs> swim again here's another another hive bait is the micro uh and finesse wiggler so these are very small baits inch and a half two inches this uh could be put on a jig head um and probably a little drop shot bait if you wanted. Very small little bait. This one is very interesting looking. I'm not going to say that this is a bust, but I just don't know that I'm going to buy I any. I think panfish bait. Yeah. I did just have a thought, though. Okay. So the honeycomb pattern that looks like is incorporated into all of these baits mm-hmm is going to have a different water displacement mm. than your typical round cylindrical um, bait. So I'll give them that. Mm-hmm. That could make a difference. Could make a difference. Definitely going to have to try it out now. <laughs> CJ, uh, if you guys don't know, will he is he is known by me to buy probably, probably three or four baits of everything yes you start out with that and if you catch one or two fish on it you have one good day for instance you had a, a pretty good day with an okashira head here recently and you bought what two hundred dollars worth the next day i haven't caught a fish since that is true but but the day that they go back on the okashira yeah i will have 
plenty of stock and you'll be grabbing it out of the boat like Ooh. usual yeah like usual go shopping in cj's boat lunker hunt hive micro and finesse hexa different play on a just a typical single tail grub um fits on the micro jig heads i don't know just different shape let's see how it swims but i think these i think these last two baits were more of like a pan panfish crappie bait yeah the thing about that though is <clears throat> maybe that's something that we should try because we've kind of been trying to experiment with really small baits at times to help us catch fish and after doing the Ned Meeky video, I had several comments of people saying, hey, like the biggest bass that I've ever caught was on a crappie jig, you know? So sometimes I think that those small little tiny baits actually could work in certain situations when those fish do not want to eat anything else. And we come across a lot of fish that do not want to eat yes. anything. Oh yeah. I think so. it's, it's situational for it's, us. Yeah. I think it's tough to throw something so small and have confidence in it yeah um it'd be worth a shot yeah let's try it so next up is the lunker hut lunker hunt hive football jig so this just looks like a foot a typical football jig a little bit different design when it comes to the head comes with a four aught hook three different weights quarter ounce three eighths in half ounce several different colors kind of still has that uh, that hive design i guess you would say to it um this is one that you would probably just have to go out and experiment with there's a bait that we both like that i wouldn't mind throwing with this to see if it wouldn't um maybe help it come through rocks a little bit better i like that it has that brush guard if it if that quarter ounce size has a small brush guard on it that'd be really good for a bait that we like yeah i, I does the head design matter i don't know like you said will it come through rocks better Maybe I think it that kind of flat sided hive design might actually help it stand up when you you know pull it to advance the lure, um, give it a little bit different action. But I yeah. think what they're doing with it is filling a void in their um, product selection. Yeah, for sure. And same with the weighted EWG. Yep. Um, same with the jig head the ned head jig head i mean it is nice though because they're creating a system so that all of these jig heads were designed to go with their hive series of soft plastics mm -hmm. so it is kind of cool to have you know this jig head's ideal for this i will say okay the hive ned jig head if you notice the line tie is almost at the very tip tip of that head and i think that's going to put the knot in a on bad, the bottom in a bad place true that is exactly what i thought of especially if you are a northern midwestern actually they have zebra mussels even down south now oh, all over. so that's a bad thing those zebes them zebes will get you they will break you off and it is not fun and that that you know I don't want to say that it's a bad design. That is my feeling as well when I yeah. saw it. It's going to put that knot right down there on the bottom, which is not great. So what do you think about the Lunker Hunt Impact Walker Max? It's a four and a half inch. Typical walking style bait to me. I don't see that. It, I think it looks good. I'd like to see four and a half inches. I think you could fit a third treble on it. Yeah. I think that's big for us too. Like we've noticed over the years, I've, I've definitely gone away from baits that have two trebles versus like if you have the same size bait with three trebles why not mm -hmm. doesn't really impact the action you're going to have a little bit better hookup i think we're we're fishing for different fish though yeah these are smaller fish Stupid small fish. mouth they miss the bait a lot so i feel like having that extra hook helps get them um i mean we're not fishing for an average three or four pound largemouth. that'd be nice it would be sweet but it's not happening here yep for for those of you who don't know we live in ohio not the best place for uh catching giants there are some really good lakes around here that we uh that we fish but the one thing that it helps with is learning your baits because you do feel like if you don't have the perfect action or the perfect 
uh, hookup ratios with your baits at times, it truly hurts you when you're trying to go out and catch maybe one of five to six keepers you'll catch all day long. Yep. So anyways, moving on with the mech, the last, um, the last impact or the last lunker hunt bait, which is uh, a deep looking jerk bait called the slash 12 T max. So this is a, a, a four and a third inch. Um, so pretty standard, a little bit smaller jerk bait. Uh, it's half ounce in size. I don't see that how deep it runs, but judging by the bill and that the fact that it's called the 12 T I'm assuming it's trying to get down to 12 foot. It's another deep jerk bait. Another deep jerk bait. All right, moving on to the next one. This one is a little bit more unique. Uh, I feel like you'll have some good input on this, but this is the Berkeley, the Perfection Lures Dudley's Flippin' Bait. So to me, this is kind of along the the same look of some of those bluegill style baits from Japan that we have seen, um, ones that have actually done really well in fishing derbies here of of recent yeah i i I don't have any experience with the perfection lures brand at all Mm -hmm. but it it almost looks like the plastic has like a matte finish to it Mm -hmm. which i like Mm -hmm. and yeah i mean it looks like a good flipping bait well it's supposed to be a perfect lure so perfect there's nothing the only i'll cut this (laughs) i'm not gonna cut it all right another perfection lures is the dudley's ned bait i'm not i'm not it's a it's amazing that ned baits are still coming out like every i think almost every per every company we've talked about has i feel like not that neds are dead and not that neds will ever be dead you will always catch Mm -hmm. them on it but i think that companies are now like we might as well just make a ned bait to have in our like you said would you say a spot filler yeah fill a void in your uh, product series but everyone has one so anyways the the dudley's ned bait the by perfection lures another another just ned bait here that we got um it's definitely different than most neds with the the tail it has it's got the tail and it's also flat flat so i'm guessing it glides better i think it would be killer on a drop shot it doesn't say how big it is i'm guessing three inches yeah that's kind of the standard standard Um, but i like the flat body especially if it is on the drop shot it's going to give that um almost like dolphin kick action Mm -hmm. this is a bait that um if you guys have used for instance like the hover rig jig head um by core lure um this would be a bait that would probably be good with that uh the way that you could rig it with that flat um side those baits just glide so well and that gliding action that's an action you don't hear a lot about but it's just becoming more and more popular it's just the way that they fall through the water is so much more intriguing to a bass because it's not a jig head that goes almost straight down it it glides it looks so natural and i think that's kind of a theme that we're seeing is these baits that just look so much more natural in the water they catch a lot more fish yeah and the something that we talked about earlier but we did not mention it for the the perfection lures is their name dudley's Mm -hmm. david dudley is notably one of the strongest finesse fishermen um, out there on tour i know whenever we see him on tv he's got a spinning rod in his hand yep so i think it's one of those things don't argue with it Mm -hmm. he designed it it's going to be good yeah that's true I do like his jig head that has the two little prongs on it. It's a perfection yeah. lure yep. as well, uh, specifically for shaky heads. That helps keep that bait up that he designed. So uh, kind of moving on with a, a bait that would work well with that is the lure, the the Dudley's Finesse Worm, another perfection lures bait. Um, it's just your kind of your standard finesse worm. Looks very similar to a, a trick worm, but again, filling a void in their um, lure in a lure category all right what about the next one this is one that is very interesting looking uh we have the shimano armor arma joint 190 ss flash boost why would you name it that why not (laughs) i mean actually i i meant to bring this one because i have this of course you do yes um it is it's a super cool bait the technology 
that Shimano put into this bait and the design, I think, outweighs the actual bait. Yeah. I think Shimano could take... Okay, in my experience, this bait is more similar to a river to sea S waiver. Okay. With about a quarter of the action of that. But it's a super cool bait. I I don't know. I know it's got like a cult following. Yeah. Um, because I this was released I think last year in yeah. Japan. Um, okay, so it's got the flash boost technology which is super cool. On the inside of the bait, there's a piece of foil on springs that whenever the bait moves, that foil flashes. And they've got that in jerk baits, crank baits. Okay, love that. It has these hook hangers, hook hanger holders that clip your hook, like the eye of the hook clips up into, so they're not dangling out. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know about that. And then it's got this joint in the middle of the bait, mm -hmm. or the the third of the front third of the bait, that totally collapses when you cast it. It is so cool. What do you mean collapses? Like this bait folds in half. When you cast it, it goes to the air in half, just like this. Wee. <laughs> like literally. Does, so does it go wee. It doesn't go wee yet. Next year. That is a big key with glide baits is they can be super hard to cast. They'll catch air, tumble through the air, twist. twist your line. So this thing actually folds together and then if you pop it, it straightens out and there's magnets that hold that joint together. The, the design process of this bait is insane. How much was it? Just looking at it. I think they're like 30, 40 bucks. Oh, really? They're not as not as bad as you would think, but it just I don't know I I think they could take all these design elements and put it into a different bait that would maybe work better. <laughs> okay, okay, that's that's good to know, and maybe they will in fact do that. That's uh like you said, they have a cult following though. It's a it's a one it's a hundred ninety millimeters, pretty big size bait. Then, yeah, huh? yeah. So. I don't know. I love you, Shimano, but get to work. It's interesting how a lot of these brands have just, uh, you know, Shimano we know as the rod or the reels, and then they got into rods, and then they got into lures and plastics, and it just well, seems I think they've been in they've been in lures in Japan for a long time. Oh, really? Yeah, I did not know that. But hey. Good looking spinner bait coming up. Yeah. The shimmy or the Shimano swaggy spinner baits. Um, it's just a, to me, it's a spinner bait. Let's see. Head design, tin and tungsten. So it's probably got like a smaller, smaller profile head. Yeah. Maybe smaller profile bait overall. Yeah. Spinner bait. Yeah. Well, let's move on. Yeah. Yamamoto Yamatanuki 2.5. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of getting into some of those, again, plastic and turd style baits and baits that you fish with an EWG a lot that are weightless. Um, this is one, has this, is this, this is the size? This one's been out for a little while, right? I think it, it came out last year in a 3.5 okay. size. It's a big bait. It's heavy. Um, haven't used it much. I like this. I, I think this smaller one will actually, I like better because the 3.5 is a big bait, mm -hmm. super bulbous. Yeah. It's like, holy smokes. Yeah. And this one says that it's almost designed or better application for clear water, small mouth spots, finesse, which is what we deal with a lot. You might, you know, depending on where you live, you might want the 3.5 inch more but this is just like category of lures and i keep calling them the poop lures because the cover scat was one of the first ones and i'd like to think that my video i did on it helped kind of push it out there <laughs> but anyways it uh it they're just the the japanese 
uh, market has had them for a little longer than we have. And the guys over there use them a lot. I just saw a guy using the cover scat in the 2.5 inch on a spinning rod with an EWG catching a lot of like Creek fish over oh, in yeah. Japan. A lot of That's them. Cool. So it's just a bait that it's, it's got that weightless design, but it's a heavy plastic. So you can cast it far and it just, it looks very natural. Again, something we just continually talk about. These baits that don't, that look really natural, they just get bit a lot yeah. more. I think it could be almost like a Ned. I don't, they don't stand up, you know, like a Ned, mm -hmm. but it could be like a weedless Ned to where it's, it's just super natural looking and it's not uh, scary for a bass to eat. Yeah which is coming up on the Yamamoto 3-inch Yamacraw. 3-inch. Um, so I believe that this came in a bigger size, what, yep. a 4-inch, and people wanted it in a small size. And so, as Yamamoto says, it's the number one request it was to get a smaller size. They came out with the 3-inch version. Looks like another crawl bait. Yeah. It looks good, though. I've, I haven't seen the smaller version, the big version. I mean, it, it just looks good. Yeah. It almost has like that rage appendage to oh. the claws mm -hmm. make it flat but yeah it's a crawl bait well there we go another yamamoto bait uh one of the most popular probably the most well-known bait in the earth the five inch cinco but now in a fat version yep when you couldn't think they could improve the Senko anymore they added 20 percent more diameter to it <laughs> you know what they'll do next year so they'll Take away 20%. Yeah. We'll have the thin Cinco. We'll be back to the... They already make that. Oh, it's geez. like a shoelace. Really? Yeah. Do they really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, you put your, your Nico hook through it without no ring, it just cuts the worm in half. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they have the fat version. So, yeah. hey, the nice thing about that is if you're using a wacky rig, you'll be able to hook it like eight times oh, in the yeah. center before... Well, I shouldn't say eight. You only get 20% more plastic, but it so will be interesting to see the fall on this. It's also a bait that, um, you know, like in Florida, in Florida, if you fish in Florida, a staple in fishing Florida is flipping a Cinco style bait like this, mm -hmm. the five inch, the six inch, you know, gambler is big in Florida and, and the ACE is a big bait down there. Bass Pro Shops makes a 5.3 and a, a six inch bait. That's a Cinco called the Sticko bait. That's one of my favorites. The fat version might be just a bit bigger profile that could help you to get a big bite. So something to think about yeah. food for thought. Yamamoto also came out with the next lure, which is called the Scope Shad. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't want to hear about more forward-facing sonar baits, but it's it's the way of the future, and this is a bait that was, they're saying, designed for the scope. Now, the big thing about it is that it is a little bit more taller. It's a little bit longer vertically, which, again, is going to allow it to show up better on your forward-facing sonar. Those taller baits you can cast out there, you're going to be able to see them at 80 90 foot um that way you can be further away from the fish help you to catch more on it yeah i think it's i mean what is it's the same as the the uh z-man uh scented jerk jerk mm. shad yeah it's you know let's add a skew um i think they're gonna cash in on the fact that they named it the scope shad yeah because immediately what does that put in people's head forward facing sonar yeah let's go but i think it so it's a mega floater formula i think it would look good on a net head yeah you're especially right. with a little tail yeah. so i think get creative with it get creative don't you know it's not just for forward facing net head use it as a, a jig trailer chatterbait yeah. trailer I'm, I'm sure there's a <laughs> lot of other uses for it yeah Next bait up is a Yamamoto Oki Worm. So this is a 10-inch straight-tailed worm um, designed with a, a mega floata, floater formula. So this is, this is going to be a great worm for your stand-up jig heads on the bottom. Something that I really like about this particular worm is that it's 10 inches but it's a smaller diameter plastic kind of reminds me of the zoom old monster 
Um, this is a bait that's going to get a lot of bites. Sometimes when you get into those baits that are very big plastic baits, um, you kind of lose out on getting a lot of bites. For guys like us in Ohio who like, we just need to catch a lot of fish sometimes. I like these skinnier baits at times because you do get bit um, on them, it seems like more often than others. And that it has the formula, it's gonna stand off the bottom, very visible for a fish. It's gonna have a tremendous amount of action with the way that it's designed mm -hmm. with that little tail. Um, be great for a little mega jig head type thing. I like it on a Nico. Or on a Nico, good thought. I mean, you don't, very everyone talks thought. about Nikos, you know, five or six inch worm. I, I don't see why this wouldn't work for it. I like that. That's a good thought. See, just a little something different, different than a, you know, big worm dragging on the bottom. Yep. Very good. Another Yamamoto bait is the itchy worm. I believe they call it. <laughs> <laughs> or is that an L? No, it's gotta be. No, an it's I. gotta be. An I. This is another, itchy. this is another 10 inch worm though. Um, with that same mega floater formula. Um, and so this is just the curly tail version. Um, it's going to look like a, um, it's going to look like a, a zoom old monster for a lot of people. But the fact that it's has that mega floater technology, it's probably going to float a little bit higher, stand up a little bit more on end. Um, and like we said, with the Ned rig, there are days where that's going to matter. A lot of days, probably not going to yeah. matter. Some days going to be the difference in catching fish. Yep. I think in their new, the mega floater formula fuels very interesting. They launched it, I think last year with a bunch of different, um, like a shad shape worm. Oh, really? Um, a, a rib Senko that looks like this. It is not very durable. Yeah. It's almost like virgin plastic. There's no salt. You can see cl clear through it. And it just, I mean, if you look at it wrong, it's just, yeah, gone. Gone. So it'll be interesting. Bigger, thicker bait. I mean, it'll hold it better, but like those little floater shad shapes, I mean, you put a hook through it and it's done. Yeah, that is annoying. But anyways, the next bait, a hard plastic bait, kind of getting away from some of the soft plastics uh, for a minute, is the Yozuri Wake Prop. Um, I believe that there is a Japanese company who makes a, um, actually Yozuri is Japanese, I believe. But I believe that there's another company who makes a bait that looks just like this. I can't think of it though. Is it the... I know I have one. <sighs> yeah. I know I have one, it's right over there. It's orange in color. Um, but anyways, this is, um, it's a four and a eighth inch bait. It's a, it's a wake bait. I think that wake baits are probably the most, one of the most underrated baits on the market for um, just fishermen in general. I think that a lot of guys don't use them, myself included. Um, and there are situations where I think that bass are hitting on top, but they're going to hit this bait a lot more because it's not really as aggressive. This one with a prop, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive, but wake baits i think are a, a whole category of of lures that probably need more more eye. we need yeah we need to play around with them more. we need to play around with them more yep and i do have to say yozuri pro probably has some of the best looking colors yeah out there and i think yozuri might be one of the most underrated brands. hard bait brands yeah um i know they're big in the saltwater world but I, I think we really need to take a look at Yozuri and, and really start messing around with some of their baits because it, I mean, they, I know it's subjective. They look phenomenal, but if you don't have confidence in a bait that you're throwing, you aren't going to catch a fish. Yeah. So I think for me, Yozuri, back in the day, I remember them just selling lures like Norm, but I always thought they were just super cheap. Super yeah. cheap lures back in the day. And though, but over the recent years, like I remember, especially when Brandon Cobb won mm -hmm. um, a tournament on their jerk bait just a couple of years ago on Lake Fork. And also, Brandon, what's the other Brandon? Or who am I, who am I thinking of? Brandon Card yes. is another Yozuri yep. guy. And he's like mega obsessed with their 
one top water bait. I can't remember. It's got like the rib belly on yeah, it. Which, the walking yeah. bait. And mm-hmm. he, he caught him like, it was like a whole year. It was like everywhere he went, he caught him on that one bait. Yeah. So I think you're right. It's a brand that um, may be popular for some in the salt water, but it's one for me I know that I need to invest a little bit more time well, in. And I think you, you're thinking of Yozuri being cheap because at – galleons and dick sporting goods they're like the dollar 99 lures yep, exactly um which doesn't always it, imply cheap it, right but it's not the same lure yeah that's just in but my I mind think, right yeah i think they've come a long way yeah so coming the, the next lure is the z-man four inch hellraiser um this is a bait that uh it already the the bait itself has been out on the market, but this is a different size. I can't. I don't know how big the other one was. I want to say it was five inch. Um, but anyways, this one this is a bait that we should be using, but we. I know I haven't. I don't think you have. No. Um, but the 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 way that this kind of skips across the water and the way that it works, like it is a bait that I honestly wish they had a two inch version. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I can get behind this bait. <laughs> it, I don't, it looks like someone took a plastic knife and put a chatter blade yep. on the back of it with a, a dangling weight yep. and a feather. And I, I haven't really heard anything about this bait. I haven't heard any like big news. I've, I've been asked several times on my channel about this particular bait. So maybe I'll have to buy one and do a full video on it. Um, maybe that is what I will do. So we'll just, we'll leave it at that. So Z-Man's coming out with another bait. It's the three inch Hercules swim bait. It's not just a three inch bait though. I think it also comes in, yes, a four, a five and a six inch. Um, this is a, uh, this is a swim bait that has the, what am I saying? The jig is internal. On the ins- internal. internal. Yep. Uh, so it's a single hooked bait. Um, but it does have, looks like it looks like it has a ring on the belly. If you want to add a treble hook, which I do appreciate them thinking of that. Cause I do like treble hooks on the bottom. If I can get away with it. It looks like a, like the OG storm swim base. That's what I was about to say, which I mean, it's cool. We got to use those more cause they do look so natural. Yeah. You don't have the jig head hanging out of it. Yeah, that's true. And I used to catch a lot of fish on that storm once. Yeah. A lot of fish. So Z-Man, we talked about, it's interesting that they have this next bait up. This is the three and a half inch Synod Jerk Shad. So this is the bait that um, Gussie won the 2023 Bassmaster Classic on. Um, it's the same proven profile as the four inch and the five inch. It's just in a smaller, um, smaller version. So um, this scented Jerk Shad z is not it's not it's not isn't is it not elastic it's a different joey joey and Ania said it's a different formula different formula oh you know it um it's salt impregnated okay and it's got pro cure super gel attractant on it okay so i think the the difference between the what was the up what was the uh not the jerk shad the 3.75 streaks? Yeah, the streaks. Difference mm-hmm. between the streaks is it does not have salt okay. or um, flavor in it. Yeah. So another another forward-facing minnow-style bait. Doesn't have to be, though. Doesn't have to Put it to on be. a drop shot. Doesn't have to put be. Put it on a Ned Rig. There's a lot of things that you can do with all these baits. So yeah. as CJ says, get creative. Get creative with it. Um, this is an, uh, the bait coming up is a Z-Man one and three quarter inch micro goat. Um, so this is like, a I don't even know. I don't even know. This might be a more of a crappie bait to me. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> You've seen like, we've had tiny, tiny little crawfish in our live wells. That's um, true. It, it just depends on when the crawfish spawn and the hatch and all that, but we, I mean, it looks good. And those little crawfish, they don't have big pinchers. They've got like little tiny, 
they look like the arms on it. That's but, true. Eh, it probably is more of a crappie thing. Um, so I kind of want to move on, though, to the next bait, which is the Z-Man 4.5-inch Gremlin. Um, <clears throat> designed by B-Lat himself. Um, this is uh, just a, another creature bait, um, but this thing looks crazy. has a lot of different appendages on it. Uh, it's kind of... It's kind of interesting because the bait itself, a lot of times with these baits, you'll have the, the appendages are such a small portion of the bait itself. And this one, it's like it's over half of the bait is the appendages that are on the back. So this is going to have a lot of action down there on the bottom. Again, like we talked about, it was designed by a, a Brian Latimer. Um, not only does he have a great YouTube channel, he catches bass all over the place, has won tournaments. Um, so anytime that I have a, a pro that is truly designed a bait, I do have a, a bigger interest in those baits. And, mm -hmm. and I love the name. Love that movie back in the day, Gremlins. Gremlins. The nice thing is this has the, the Z-Man Elastec material, so you won't have to worry about bluegills or perch nipping you know, the tails or the legs off it. And if you zoom in, if you look at the flappers and the legs, you can tell that they have ribs inside of them. Mm. I'm guessing to hold air so it kind of bubbles up more. Um, I think it would be sweet on a Carolina rig. Ooh, I like that, Siege. Good thinking. Siege is a good outside-of-the-box thinker. Well, this was part one of a maybe two or three part series on all the new baits that are coming out in 2024. And once those bit, once those come out, I'm going to leave a link for it right here and right here. Um, guys, we thank you for watching. Subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Yep. Part two, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. <laughs>